Well, hi everybody, and welcome back to Impy, your friendly cat's Moran. We are a couple sailing around the world, having left South Africa some years ago now. So those of you who follow our travels will know that we have arrived in New Caledonia, a return visit after a detour to New Zealand for cyclone season. We were overwhelmed with folks who appreciated the technical aspects we include while sailing. So in this particular video we will share some insights into how we navigate safely into what for us would be new territory and this includes our arrival in Port de Goro. Right in this video we are planning to sail to the Loyalty Islands and that visit we will share with you shortly in the next video as we have just returned for better internet connection. So here we are sailing out of Bay de Prony and headed for the Loyalty Islands. But before we depart from the mainland, we want to anchor off a reef on a quaint little spot on the southeastern side of New Caledonia known as Port de Goro. Now, while most charts around these islands and French territory in particular are pretty accurate, there are many places such as Fiji which are not accurate yet. And as good practice, we always assume inaccuracy and we do whatever we can to make sure MP finds safe passage wherever she goes. So here you can see at Port de Goro we have a reef system. So the chart showed two entry or exit points through the reef and many corals coral heads, deeps and shallows, as one enters the area and heads up to find calm anchorage, higher up in what I suppose one could call a bay. It's a reef fringed bay. So the bay also boasts a really nice waterfall, which we wanted to see. We wanted to anchor in the vicinity of this waterfall, you know, relax with a glass of wine in hand to the setting sun, you know, the view and the roar of the water, and all this required navigating to this location. Now ultimately we are going to use our ship's chart plotter to navigate through here. However, we are going to assume that the charts lack accuracy and we need to plot a course of safety on the plotter. Our exercise is going to show whether we can trust the plotter charts or not. So here we go. So to best show the systems we have, Let's share some footage which we took whilst underway. For this demonstration we will run two programs on the laptop, namely OpenCPN and SAS Planet. Okay, so here's a thing uh, that, that I can share with you around SAS Planet. We have here, you know, OpenCPN and SAS Planet. You can see we have a boat position here and we have a boat position there and these are active positions. Active positions meaning this is real time and the boat is moving across the chart. The boat is moving over the overlay. This is the little island that I just videoed um, off the side here for you guys to see. Now of course the GoPro pushes things away but uh, I was just showing on SAS Planet where this little island is and um, here we are. We're cruising, you can see the mountain ranges, you can see an island out there. In between there are these clusters or sort of reef clusters. There's an island over there and there's an island over here. And if one looks carefully you can see a reef running out of the island over there. And uh, they have a channel marker, a red, a red marker, red boy over there. I'm not sure if the GoPro picks that up entirely. Um, and then in between here, you know, you've obviously got uh, bommy heads coming up all over the show. Uh, the bommy heads here are pretty deep, so nothing to really worry about. You know, they, they come up to about 5 meters in places, 20 meters in a lot of places. But you know, one has to make sure of these things, and we just avoid them. And we do that by using satellite imagery mostly, because uh, the charts don't pick up every bommy out there. Red marker there green marker up there I can see they, they have different shapes on top of the markers what a beautiful island man the reef the island beautiful mountain ranges 
no wind of course but um, just nice to be out here this is the little island that I just videoed um, off the side here for you guys to see and um, we have a GPS puck over here that is a GPS puck is picking up uh, our XY position from uh, satellites out there yeah this is the cable that basically plugs into our USB port over here and and basically um, this little program that we run called Franson's Gate this this here is Franson's Gate takes the current USB port which is COM3 and and that is COM3 right there you can see COM3 is the input so that GPS puck comes along into COM3 where I've got it and it picks up COM3 as an input now if one goes and looks at the output you can see it has created virtual COM ports virtual being COM2 and COM4 so what it's done there is it's actually split uh, the COM ports it's, it's, it's taken one port here and split it into two virtual ports but the free version allows us to use um, one input for two outputs so here we have uh, COM3 in and we know that we have COM2 and 4 out so we can actually now go ahead and assign different COM ports which are virtual COM ports to one device which which basically shares that device for each separate program and the way we do that over here is on OpenCPN you'll see we have a connection we are currently reading COM port 4 uh, on SAS Planet we can see we are actually using COM port 2 right so that is COM port 2 and there the satellite uh, reception is showing that we are getting reception on COM port 2 acknowledge that we've arrived at a waypoint so every time we hit a waypoint the waypoint alarm goes off so COM port 2 on SAS planet and COM port 4 on OpenCPN two boats one screen split programs depth satellite image and here's me busy uh, creating an explanation for our next video which hopefully you're looking at right now okay now regarding OpenCPN and SAS Planet just to be a little bit more clear about this and I'm videoing this from a different location I thought I needed to add some clarity here just to say that SAS Planet has the ability to actually show or display the satellite image offline so we're sailing out there in the deep blue we do not have any um, internet connection and we want to see the image offline and the, the way that we actually do that is that over here on the left hand side of the screen we can select a data source and the data source is either cache internet or internet and cache so what we would do when we're in internet reception and prior to departing for our remote location we would use internet and cache and we personally store the cache I think it's actually pronounced cache I call it cache because you know I wasn't very well educated cache. we but store uh, the cache files onto an external hard drive and we can access that in real time as we are sailing so the cache will actually move along with the boat at the various zoom levels depending on how we viewed it at internet when we had internet reception so there you go SAS planet um, whatever you see under this particular one internet and cache while you've got internet whatever you see on the screen cache is actually downloading the image as you see it through the different zoom levels so it's actually important to go and take a look at the different zoom levels uh, you'll see there this particular one was not generated and I'm now not hooked up at the moment on internet but I've got a close enough view in there but you can actually cache this through the various zoom levels and you can see the pieces where I've actually gone in and and, and got good clarity on a place uh, sometimes for example you do not get good clarity um, on on Google Maps and then you have the ability to go and scroll through a number of different uh, service providers or satellite providers and let's take a look at how Bing's satellite looks there and there you can see Bing has had a very nice uh, got a very nice quality image and, and one can actually see uh, on this image um, you know corals in the water 
Um, yeah, and this could even be generated further on internet to look with even better quality than this. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. So you have you have different service providers. Nokia, um, I don't think I've actually uploaded the Nokia one. Well, there's a lot of cloud cover on the Nokia one here. So that's no good for us, which is probably why I went across to Bing um, and downloaded the Bing satellite uh, image. No cloud cover on Bing. I hope you guys have got the idea. Um, but but there you go. That's the power of this program. It's absolutely amazing. Well, now that you have an idea of what we can do with SAS Planet, let's go ahead and take a look into our first stopover en route, the Loyalty Islands. We have a nice spot here on the southeast side of New Caledonia mainland from which to depart on a good weather system, so we are going to anchor here behind the fringing reef system. Having downloaded the satellite imagery to our external hard drive whilst we had internet, we can now in an offline situation plan visually our route into Port de Goro. Now remember we want to see this waterfall that the locals speak of, so we want to anchor roughly where the red X marks the spot. Now the reef system has two breaks in it. We will enter through one and we will exit through the other. So we will go through our cache offline now of course to make sure to get the best quality image we downloaded. Ok, now let's show an online shot with internet of an image being generated, you know, and saved to the cache for later use. Ok, so you've seen the previous pictures, uh, so there we go. Uh, Bing definitely has the best coverage for planning and entry to this particular bay. So let's create a route now for a clear passage to our anchor position. Ok, we need to speed this up a bit, but you get the idea. We are plotting a route, sticking to deep water for now, and looking for best options to cross the shallows. Guys, this program really helped us in the Tuamoto Archipelago, where we cruised for months and revisited the atolls for a second season. This program helped us to get the most out of the Tuamotos, and most spots where other yachts would not dare to venture. Ah, let's interrupt this a little bit. Here is an interesting feature. This is the ruin of the old Port de Goro Wharf, built by the Japanese who mined iron ore here. The first ship loaded here in January of 1939, was the 8,000 ton Danish ship Afbjorn, and in 1941 mining here was eventually stopped following restrictions laid down by the French government. So wherever you click, the route drops a waypoint, which is a coordinated XY position, and it is these positions we will use on our ship's chart plotter to create a route on the plotter at the helm station. So here we are now looking at our anchoring position, enough swinging room and all looks good for a safe anchorage position. Now we go ahead and save this route to our route manager, we export these files to a known location on the laptop too, so we can import the route into other programs like OpenCPN, our iPad Navionics, from our iPad Navionics to the ship's plotter and so on. We can also email these uh, files to friends who are cruising in these areas later on so that they can actually upload them and follow the same routes. Right, nearly done folks. We now have our route and it is this route that we want to place onto our chart plotter so we can see it from the helm. Ok, so hovering over the route with the mouse, right click and edit highlights the waypoints which we can easily move if we need to and also we can use these points reading the waypoints and positioning the same waypoint positions on our ship's chart plotter. <laughs> and here is that waterfall which turned out to have no water when we arrived. One does not usually want to enter a reef system with the sun in one's eyes. You know with the sun behind it makes everything clear and you can see the corals in the water. But sometimes one doesn't have a choice. It's either that or a nighttime approach. And SAS Planet sure makes this very much easier for one. So the reef stops there, comes into there, and then uh, from there it goes out again. So you want that gap.
You'll remember our mate Fred on SV Serafina? Well, he was headed for Vanuatu and sailed with us via the Loyalty Islands. Okay, I mentioned this uh, contraption earlier in the video, but to elaborate on what we are seeing abandoned here is that just before the bombing of Pearl Harbor, France, the UK and the US tried to slow down Japan's invasion of China by embargoes and resources like oil, steel and other metals, and therefore mining here was stopped under the directorate of the French government at the time. Few people actually realize the American involvement in New Caledonia. The Americans arrived on March the 12th, I think, 1942, and Numia became the Pacific headquarters. In 46 months, more than 1 million GIs were stationed in New Caledonia. It is difficult for me to imagine, as I cruise in awe of this beautiful place, that you know, one can safely assume that until this mining territory was shut down to Japan, this was a major source for raw materials that went into the manufacturing of war machinery. Yeah, you know, one probably can't see this, but um the mountain range behind us is magnificent. It's really, it's like cliffs with uh, beautiful coniferous trees, uh, these tall pines coming out of it. And I think the GoPro would tend to take away how dramatic it looks there on that point. But um, when you're there and you're looking at it in life, um, just amazing, beautiful landscapes, beautiful.